mentioned something in the in the in the Christian structure because you know they, there would be suspicion and and uh, and possibly uh, you know. Um, well, basically, I, what I did was I basically talked about um, uh, when I went to do this initially. This is probably what I told you when I went there that night. I had planned to do a um, guided a guided sitting at the beginning of this uh, that's called Christian Centering Prayer, okay? And um, the, the, the priest, the Catholic priest who designed this uh, Christian Centering Prayer, he, he picked it up uh, from some ancient texts. Uh, this is what the early Christians had done, this sort of prayer. And I was all ready to do that. And then I thought, why am I doing that? when I walked in the room and I saw the, the vibration was basically, what, what have we here? You know, this is a, something we've never seen before. This, uh, you know, Buddhist nun uh, is going to, to do, and there was actually fear in their eyes of, of some of them. And one of them was very adamant with me during the retreat. We thought she'd never come around. And in the end, she wanted to take it home to her state and immediately translate it and start teaching it. That's how <laughs> that ended up. You know, she was so excited with what it was. But then I saw the immediate message to me was there has to be a simpatico here that is set up immediately between you and and um, and the Christian who is uh, listening to this. And in this, just isn't Christian. This is Christian, Hindu, Islamic, uh, you know, Muslim, whatever. Um, okay, and um, it doesn't matter who the person is. It's a universal thing for humanity. So the universal thing has to come out. And in their case, it has to do with the morality. The morality became the binding issue. The morality uh, of, of laying out a quick map of the Ten Commandments and the five precepts in full. And when you break down the five precepts in full, you know, you have to go to the sutta where it breaks it down. You know, like you have one that says, don't tell lies, but that's actually, let's see, it's lies and then it's gossip and then it's slander, right? And then it's a uh, harsh language. So you have four commandments there, you see. And once they began to understand uh, the the uh, simpatico, the the way there was a, a balance between what we were doing, the only thing that was missing was uh, God wasn't there uh, to to oversee everything and say and and this is this is the deal, okay. Um, it was up to us to personally investigate ourselves. And the other part of it was taking the person to the scientific side of this, because the scientific side of this whole thing is that, you know, Siddhartha Gautama is the father of neurocognitive science. And I, I've done that, that um, argued that in, in a presentation in a 30 minute presentation once where people actually remembered that I did it. <laughs> you know, it was very funny. I thought no one's ever gonna remember this. And they showed up a, a, a year or two later running into me in Malaysia and said, aren't you the one that did this? And I said, oh yeah, um, but it was over in Sri Lanka. And he said, well, these monks are from Sri Lanka. We heard you do that. These nine monks were sitting to the right. There were about 40 monks. That was why I wanted to do it, that uh, presentation. And so it's, it's getting the person into seeing the universality of what it is that we're teaching has nothing to do with an individual person. It has to do with the human race. It's this, it's this, this part of it. So like you're saying, you should do this in the beginning of this whole thing. And I think you're absolutely right. It should be done in the beginning of it. So that, that's what you think, right? Uh, yes, because, um, and, and also one of the things that you took, uh, took me through when we were talking about that, was how you reframed the, the, the training in terms of, um, you know, 
what in, in this particular instance, a Christian context, um, you would be expected to, to try to develop. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, because the question, the, the issue of giving people a 10 day retreat and giving it to them uh, in, in a platform where you're teaching um, different groups of religions, this isn't an individual, it's non-religious. This is a non-religious issue. And from what are they trying to get out of it? They're, the things they're, that you're taking them out of it is a change in personality. And you're talking peace versus war. And you're talking not just, uh, you know, suffering and uh, not, you know, cessation of suffering, but you're, you're extending that from suffering and cessation of suffering to war and peace and to the community and to the individuals and take, that's where you bring in, uh, you know, um, bring in uh, the Honey Ball Sutta, Majima Nikaya number 18, and you bring in, um, also bring in the, uh, the practice, the, what you're going to use as an exercise in 148, and I think it's, um, 148 and 137 or something like that and you're and you're taking you're, you're showing the person this is something for us to discover as human beings I mean I still don't have the answer I don't think anybody has the answer Jeremy whatever his name is he doesn't have the answer I tried to listen to all of that and he has the idea and, and the shift the paradigm and how to get the human beings to all be at peace and everything but he still doesn't have the delivery system the delivery system is the, is the most complex thing. And I think what we have is this really fun way of delivering this. If, if you can, if you take, get it delivered to, to young people and you're, you're looking at, you can't look at it this way. You cannot look at the issue of suffering and, um, and cessation of suffering in terms of this is the problem, folks, and we have the weekend and we have to come up with the answer. Uh-uh, that's not it. Now, the Russians and the Chinese, they've got, the Chinese are really good at this. We've been around 8,000 years and we can wait. <laughs> so anything that they want to have happen in the entire world, okay, however they want the world to be, they're happy because the patients is built into them. I don't quite understand it, but they can wait, you see. And so this is what we need to understand that we should be going into kindergarten, not even high school. We should struggle to get it into kindergarten and into the grade school and the middle school and go from there because we need to look at what we're creating for our grandchildren and great grandchildren. We don't need to be, we can talk about what we're doing now, get excited about it for sure. Yeah, get excited about it, get dedicated to it, but understand that it's not happening next week. This is the thing, you see? Look, if the, if, if, if I don't know if, if the Russians have sleepers in the United States, but I, you know, I certainly believe it's possible, but they were, they created a system of they're not interested in what they did in 1960 or in, in the late 50s after the Second World War. If they did plan that program, the way it's explained is going to come to fruition. Look at where we are. It's 2022 by 2025. Now these people that were come in, the effects of it now, this is nothing to do with politics, what I'm talking about, but the whole theory is there. We get frustrated as people if we cannot have what we want when we want it, don't we? That's our biggest problem. We want instant gratification. Well, the best thing I've seen so far for instant gratification is TWIM. Honestly, it is the best thing I have seen so far in 70 years, 73. <laughs> and saying my students here come in after spending a day, uh, a couple days 
somewhere else and they come trotting in they're all excited because they can see dependent origination. And I'm, you know, like, okay. But the thing is they're all excited because they can see dependent origination, but I'm not changing. Mm. Mm. So can you tell me what's wrong here? And what's wrong is you're trying to do a dance in four, four time with one, two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is, what do you mean? This is a piece of music, all right? And it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It isn't one, two, one, two, one, two. And if you have a student that insists upon letting go, coming back, letting go, coming back, letting go, coming back, they're doing one, two, one, two, one, two. They're never going to change. So they may as well just resign themselves. They're never going to change and go have some ice cream. <laughs> You know, because they're not going to change. Okay, they have to be doing the whole recipe. You see, you have to do that. And so um, he finally got it, but I had, to, I had to stand here and make him say, so what's wrong? So what's wrong is you're not dancing. You're just, you're just plodding one, two, one, two, and you're not going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You have to dance the dance in order to understand it and have the changes happen. Yeah. And they happen fast too. And, and, and one of the ways that you, uh, uh, again, just going back to what we discussed, one of the ways that you, you described it um, was very succinctly about how all of those steps, one, two, three, and four, fitted in with the um, uh, expectations, desires, and um, uh, um, training, if you like, in, for instance, the, the case that we did was with that Christian environment. So then there was a real acceptance around what the practice was trying to do and, and how that, it would fit That's in. right. Yep. So I think that's, that's that, that. And then it, and then it kind of takes the whole issue about this being something alien out because there's, a, there's an identity to it. Um, Dr. Harvey, back in 1940, was actually the father I guess you could say he was an early father of um, behavioral modification therapy and what happened was he he discovered uh, accidentally <laughs> to bring a um, to bring a, a client in and uh, instead of going back and saying and what happened before that and before that with Freud's way of going backwards, he took one incident of anger and um, worked, got the person to work through that, telling him, talking to him through of what happened in one particular incident of anger. And I read the paragraph about what he did. I just about started laughing, saying, well, that's what your mother does. That's what I do. <laughs> I teach people exactly how this is happening and how it's all working when you go through a tiny incident in your life, how everything is working perfectly. And um, once you see it, it, we have this unique thing that I keep going back to in 128, Majima Nikai number 128, and it's in the last paragraph. Um, and it's something that just sticks in your mind, or it just sticks in my mind like crazy. And it says, I understood that, now this is talking about 11 different hindrances. And he says, I understood that doubt is an imperfection of the mind and had abandoned doubt and imperfection of the mind. So what he's saying is the moment that he understands there, there's an imperfection, he abandons it. This is what it's, it's saying. The moment that he does that. Okay. And so in the case of Harvey, what he was trying to get the person to figure out with anger was the moment that you see 
the detect the uh, symptom, the moment you detect the tightening, the tension and tightening, that is where you you can uh, let go of the of the uh, the anger at that spot, and then eventually, what we have in neuro in in the uh, neural plasticity, what we find is that the brain is learning in a very simple way: tap, 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 tap tap, tap, and as long as you tap the same way. And so thus the, the students coming in this week and saying, we can't understand what's wrong. And you say, what do you mean what's wrong? Well, what's wrong is uh, I'm doing this, but I'm not changing. Well, what are you doing? Steps are four steps and you're doing two steps and you expect it to change. It's not gonna change. Pretty simple.